NASA pull off the greatest cover-up in human history. Oh, yeah, perfect. Growl like a tiger. Mew like a kitten. Guess what our first myth is? Still photography. Yes! Most of the alleged evidence that NASA faked the moon landing comes from NASA's own photography, which theorists claim shows clear evidence the moon landing was faked in the studio and could not have been filmed on the moon. Say hoax. Hoax! So these are the photos the guys will focus on. According to Apollo hoax advocates, this shot was taken in a studio because the shadows are not parallel. Supposedly, that's something that could only happen with multiple light sources. Then there's this image of an artfully lit astronaut. Conspiracy cheerleaders claim if he really was standing in the shadow of the moon module, you wouldn't be able to see him so clearly. You know what? Let's do parallel shadows first. How do you want to test it? Oh, I think we should do a large miniature because we can test the placement of all the various elements. It's kind of a complex thing. Yeah, we need a lot of control over those elements. Exactly. All right, let's do it. So first up, the guys need a single, super-sized light source to stand in for the sun. Amy, ah, I'd like to introduce you to your son. Over here, I look like one of the aliens in Close Encounters. That's the solar. Now for the lunar. Cue the build montage, because Jamie's making a moon. I've got a good first start on my lunar set. It's just spandex and, um, let's see, Portland cement with a little bone black, which is basically black powder. Ah, that could not be better. What do you say we turn on the lights and uh, see what our shadows look like? Yeah, let's see the light. Let's turn it around. I'm spinning around. Watch your eyes. What do you think? Works for me. We've had the lights, and there's been plenty of action. So where's the... This is the camera that we're going to use. It's a Hasselblad that's very similar to the one that was used on the moon, except that we've put a digital feed out the back so that we can look at the images in real time on a monitor and make comparisons to the original shots. All right, with our sun in place, man, in addition to looking totally freaking awesome, it's pretty clear here but the ship and the rocks both on a flat surface that their shadows are totally parallel. And that is what the myth proponents say the NASA photo should look like. Instead, you can see the rock and landing module shadows are in different planes. Now we need to figure out what it would take to make them not parallel. Yeah, let's play with the topography underneath it and see what we can get. Conspiracy theorists say there's only one explanation for this, two light sources. And since there's only one light source on the moon, and that's the sun, that's really kicking it forward. This has to be shot in a studio. We're positing that it's the topography of the moon causing these shadows of the rocks to look like they're not parallel, when in fact they are, and that's what we're trying to imitate here. It's all just about adjusting us directly to the light. What Adam and Jamie have done is simply give the miniature lunar landscape some realistic contours and imperfections. That's perfect. Is it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and the shadows appear to move out of their parallel path. And Adam, happy. <laughs> Dude, you said it looks perfect. Takes his snap. Taking the shot. So I can hear what you're saying. You're saying, but you guys replicated the moonshot on a set and you're special effects artists. In fact, you're exactly the guys that would have hired to do this kind of thing in the first place. That's not the point. The point is we're addressing the specific claim by conspiracy theorists that this photo has only one explanation, and that's two light sources. We've demonstrated here two shadows which are parallel from a single light source which we've made look far off parallel using only the topography that they're sitting on. And I guess that means it's busted. Totally busted. You can achieve shadows that do not look parallel from a single light source. Across the web, there's a host of hoax theories claiming NASA faked this footage. Look at the size of that rock! And a ton of TV covering the conspiracy claims. But no one has actually taken the time to test them. Until now. The next task in our moon myth-busting is this photo here. What conspiracy theorists say is that he's too well lit. You can see him clearly yet he's in this black, black shadow of the LEM. There's only one light source on the moon. 
That's the sun. Conspiracy theorists claim there must be a second one making him visible, and we're going to find out. And to do just that, the guys are going to shine a substitute sun on the very model of a modern miniature landing module. Here it is. Conspiracy theorists are saying that the shot had to have been faked using a fill light. Personally, I think it's because the moon's surface is reflective. And when you think about it, you look at the moon on a clear night, it's obviously reflecting light back at you. That's why you see it. The question here is, is it enough to create this shot? To test Jamie's hypothesis that the mythical fill-in light is simply sunlight bouncing back off the moon's surface, the guys black out the set. Behold our moon landing set. Because it's all about reflectivity, we put blacks all around the shop, covered the whole set to eliminate any spill, any reflected light that's not coming directly from our moon's surface. That's the landing module, astronaut, lights, and camera sorted. Dude, this looks so cool. The only missing component is a moon dust analyzer that accurately reflects the reflective quality of the real stuff. The dust that covers the moon is called regolith. When the sunlight shines upon the moon, regolith reflects a certain amount of sunlight back towards Earth. That reflective quality is called its albedo. Now, the albedo of moon dust is between 7 and 10 percent, according to our sources at NASA. To make our version of regolith, we used Portland cement and charcoal powder. Now, to measure the albedo, or reflected light coming off of it, we used Whoa. a light meter and our fake sun. 8%, dude, that is perfect. What we just showed with this test is that our sample regolith has a reflective index of about 8%, which makes it ideal for us to test with. This is the moment of truth. We've got an accurately shaped and textured moon lander, and we've concocted an accurate moon surface that has the same reflectivity index as the actual moon. If the myth is to be believed, our astronaut on the dark side in the shadow of the lander is going to just fade to total black when we try and take a picture of him. All right, you ready? I'm set. All right, here we go. Taking the photo. Let's see. There it is. Oh, there you go. He's standing full on in the shadow, and you'd think you wouldn't be able to see him. He'd be dark, but he's not. He's in brightest day. The myth here is that you would not be able to see this astronaut because he's in the shadow and there's only one light source on the moon. He would, by definition, be black. Our photo here proves just the opposite, that with a single light source, with the surface of the same reflectivity as the moon, our astronaut is clearly visible, busting that myth.